Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swaggle Haas. And in this video, we're taking a look at GoCollect's hottest trending comics for the week of May 21st. Now, for those who don't know, GoCollect puts out bi-weekly articles that switches between hottest and trending comics, both of which take a look at volume of sales and what's recently moving in the market. And this week, we got trending comics once again. But before I get into the list, if you guys could drop me a like or comment or subscribe if you're enjoying the content, help support the channel, doing those things, I'd appreciate it. But let's get into this video here today. And of course, I will put a link in the description if you guys want to do further reading. This article is written by Matt Tuck, and we got to talk about some really cool books on the list this week. This one, of course, in the number five spot is actually going to be Secret Wars number one, up 11 spots, sitting in the 15th slot. And what is the significance of this? Well, of course, you guys know this would be the first issue of the titled series Secret Wars, a book that came out in 1984, drawn by Mike Zeck and written by Jim Shooter. Now, for many collectors out there, Secret Wars is the greatest crossover event of all time in Marvel comic books. And one of the reasons why this book has gotten hot this week is because coming off the heels of the Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, we had some information that inferred that we are going to be getting some kind of Secret Wars event later on in the MCU in the future. More specifically, there was the mention of spoilers out there, there was the mention of Incursions, and Incursions is an event that occurred actually in the 2015 uh, Secret Wars Jonathan Hickman run, and a lot of those books have also been moving in the market, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, this is the very first Secret Wars, and for that reason, this book has been moving as well. It definitely feels like they're going to probably do some amalgamation of this, and so this book has been specced on for quite some time. I mean, it's a classic cover. It's got all your favorite, you know, superheroes on the cover, reeks of nostalgia, reeks of, you know, 80s a Saturday morning cartoon, and so it's a great book to have in the collection and is one that I think is going to continually get hot when we eventually get the inevitable titled film. And as we dig into the numbers, we'll take a look here. 9.8 is on the census, a 1,117. Fair market value suggests them to be around the $450 range. 30-day moving is $497, so kind of right there in line almost. Uh, one year moving was $574, but this is actually pretty, you know, a common occurrence right now. A lot of the books uh, have definitely had their cooling off period, had their correction, and this one is sitting right around that $500 plateau, which is kind of more on the the, you know, expensive side of, I would say, copper age books, but definitely is a key that people would love to have in that grade. And then of course, 1984 book down here at the bottom, you're not going to see it slab in the low grade, but when you go onto eBay looking for this book, you can find rock copies selling around that $40 price range or so. All right, let's move on now to the fourth hottest trending comic of the week. And the fourth hottest trending comic of the week is one that is really cool as far as an indie book is concerned. But this one right here is actually Paper Girls number one, new to the list, sitting in the 82nd slot. And what is the significance of this? Well, of course, this would be the first issue of the series known as Paper Girls, written by Brian K. Vaughn and drawn by Cliff Chang, a book that came out in 2015. And this one has been interesting for quite some time in the market because it was recently announced, or I guess not recently announced, but a couple years ago, it was announced that that Paper Girls was going to be an option property coming to Netflix streaming. And, you know, there's actually been, you know, casting announcements. There's been production. In fact, just the other week, they actually released the very first teaser trailer for the Paper Girls series. And I think that that had an effect on the market. I mean, this was a book that was definitely heavily speculated on once we got those original announcements. And now that we got that teaser trailer, you know, collectors are starting to remember that Paper Girls is a series that is coming. And, you know, because it has Brian K. Vaughn behind it, I mean, this is one of those series that, you know, collectors really, really love. So unlike some of the other properties that have been optioned onto Netflix, I mean, I think there's a lot of belief that this could be a very successful series. Like maybe Paper Girls number one is going to have that, you know, invincible one treatment, or it's going to have that success that say, you know, a, a Walking Dead show did, because this one feels like it has all the tools going for it in terms of its viability as a long running TV show. It's got that Stranger Things vibe that people really seem to like. So this book is really interesting. And because of the teaser trailer has been moving recently in the market. And as we dig into the numbers for this one, we'll take a look here. Uh, 9.8, there's 2,132 on the census. Fair market value has it at the $110 range, 30-day moving right in line to the fair market value. Of course, like the Secret Wars book, this is a book that had a big spike up, you can see there, in 2021. Then it's had its correction. And it definitely feels like this is probably a good floor to buy into this book because, you know, if you're someone who believes in the Paper Girl series, it definitely feels like even if the show isn't all that successful, it's going to have a spike once we get those trailers, once we get the drop of the show. I'm sure Netflix is going to put a big marketing push behind this one, and I wouldn't be surprised if this series takes the world by storm. All right, let's go on now to the third hottest trending comic of the week, and the third hottest trending comic of the week is one that is finally getting its just due, and this one, of course, is Thor number two, new to the list, sitting in the 85 slot, and what is the significance of this? Well, this would be issue two of the Jason Aaron run, a book that came out in 2014 and would feature the first full appearance of the Jane Foster character as Thor. Now, of course, we all know 
that, you know, Thor number one that has the second cameo appearance with Jane Foster on the cover has really been the book that has been moving the most in the market due to the fact that we got the Natalie Portman reveal in the Thor Love and Thunder trailer. Everybody was flocking to that book. Everybody's been flocking to the What If book. But one of the things that's interesting about that book is that, you know, we see her on the cover and we only see her in cameo on the last page. And it's actually this book right here, Thor number two, where we get her actual first full appearance. And this book has been kind of lagging in the market a little bit. I mean, there was some movement when we got that initial trailer, but it definitely was not the book that the market was moving towards. In fact, there were some other books like Thor 25 and things like that. Her first cameo appearance that I felt like was moving more than this one right here. And it definitely feels like, you know, now that everyone has kind of specced on those other ones, this is the one that is starting to get some attention. And maybe this is going to be the one that has longer legs in the future because, you know, people like to have those full appearances. You know, it's a little more satisfying to get more bang for your buck when you're owning the character when they're fully involved in the story. And this seems to be kind of an undervalued book with that regard. But as we dig into the numbers, we'll take a look here. 9.8s have 183 on the census. Fair market value has $170 on this one. 30 day moving kind of right in line to 180. Uh, one year moving was 184. And definitely kind of where this book is in terms of its value, you know, sitting around that $180 price point uh, definitely feels like a bargain, you know, because when we're thinking about, you know, Thor number one, that's a book that's really selling around the, you know, 300 to $350 range. So this book definitely seems like, you know, kind of a half off uh, bargain one if you're someone who likes the Jane Foster as Thor character. And then of course, 2014 book, not going to see it slap at the low grade, but when you go into eBay looking for this book, you can typically find it selling around that $40 to $50 range or so. All right, let's go on now to the second hottest trending comic of the week. And the second hottest trending comic of the week is one that I think, you know, kind of has its own kind of cult following, really interesting book to talk about. But this is actually Nick's number three, new to the list, actually sitting in the 91st slot. And what is the significance of this? Well, this would actually be the first appearance of the character known as X-23, otherwise known as Laura Kinney, the daughter of Wolverine. A book that came out in 2004, written by Joe Quesada and drawn by Joshua Middleton. Now, X-23, of course, a beloved character in Marvel and actually made her debut in the Logan film that people really loved. You know, we saw the character there on the screen. And this has been a really interesting book in the market because I feel like it's one of the sort of uh, unique books books in that it's a modern book with kind of a low print run that is really hard to find in the market. And for that reason, this is a book that actually commands values that sort of rival that of, you know, uh, really high value sort of Bronze Age books and things like that. So not a lot of times you get these sort of modern books that can have these premiums that rival, you know, other key books out there in the market. But this is one of those exceptions. And, you know, of course, Nyx is a character. We, Like I said, we saw her in Logan. Uh, kind of hard to say if we're going to see her, you know, in this new iteration in the MCU. MCU. I mean, certainly as Matt points out in the article, you know, we got Doctor Strange, we got Professor X, you know, there's a lot of insinuation that the mutants are here. A lot of people are thinking about Wolverine and that could be one of the reasons why, you know, people were thinking about, hey, uh, you know, X-23, maybe I should get her book as well. So this is kind of a, you know, a deep cut as far as the speculation is concerned. But regardless, a great book out there in the market and one that collectors really, really love. But as we dig into the numbers, we'll take a look at the values here. There's actually a few 9.9s on the census, last sold in 2017 for, you know, 4000 $1,500. Uh, hard to say what that would go for today. But here at the 9.8 grade, you have census 2067. Fair market value has it at 1650. 30 day moving at 1800. Uh, and that's actually over the one year of 1794. So a book that has actually been kind of trending up recently out there in the market definitely is one that collectors like to have their hands on. We can take a look here at the graph that this is one that actually shot up like the other books in 2021 had a little bit of its correction, but is actually maintaining kind of that floor overall. And that just goes to show what kind of passion collectors have for this book right here in the market. Then of course, down here at the bottom, this is actually one of those books that does have a little bit of a value for being a modern book at the low grade. Uh, but generally speaking, when you go into eBay looking for raw copies of this thing, I mean, I think you'd be hard pressed to find it selling for less than $800 or so. All right, let's go on now to the hottest trending comic of the week. And the hottest trending comic of the week is actually one of my personal favorite Silver Age books, a lot of people's personal favorite Silver Age books, one of the greatest covers of all time. This one, of course, is Fantastic Four number 49, new to the list, sitting in the 100 spot. And what is the significance of this? Well, of course, this would be the first full appearance of the character known as Galactus. This would be the second appearance of the Silver Surfer. It would be the first cover appearance of both of those characters. A book that came out in 1966, written by Stan Lee and drawn by Jack Kirby. Now, of course, Fantastic Four 49, an all-time classic book, one of the greatest covers of all time, a book that every collector wants to have in their collection. 
there's been a lot of speculation that we're going to be getting Silver Surfer at some point in the near future. Uh, that presumably is going to be leading to Galactus. And for that reason, this has been a book that has been heavily speculated on for these last couple years or so. Now, it's interesting to see that this book is actually starting to trend up again. And as Matt points out in the article, one of the reasons for that could be that, you know, in Doctor Strange and Multiverse of Madness, of course, if you haven't seen it now, I don't know what to tell you. I'm going to give you some spoilers here. But we did get the John Krasinski Reed Richards in that, which basically brings into canon the Fantastic Four and sort of ipso facto as a result of that, uh, that has to infer that, you know, Silver Server and Galactus are out there and soon to come into the market. And I feel like because this is a book that is sort of on every collector's list, there's probably, you know, that, you know, looming sort of FOMO and dread if you're someone out there who really wants this book and doesn't yet have it in their collection. This is going to be one of those books that you're going to definitely want to get before we ever start to see, you know, images of these characters or leaks or rumors that suggest that they're going to be showing up in a certain kind of film. But as we dig into the numbers, we'll take a look here at, you know, various uh, values across the different grades. 9.8, last sale. There's only one on the census. Last sale was 2016 for $44,000. I definitely think because there's only one on the census, this would easily be a six-figure book here today. Uh, 9.6, you know, 14 on the census. Fair market value at the $27,000 range. This is definitely a book that actually, you know, has a really, really low census count at the highest uh, grade values because of the fact that it's an all black cover. This is in contrast to FF48, the first appearance of the Silver Surfer, which actually has a much higher census than this book. Even though that book is more valuable, I think, you know, the, the numbers start to kind of equalize uh, at the higher grade count right there. So here at the 8.0, you have 292 at the census, fair market value at the $3,800 range, although 30 day moving is at the $4,000 range. 6.0 here, 2200 fair market value, 2300 30 day moving. So a book that's, you know, basically across most grades has actually been selling higher than its fair market value. You see the 4.0 fair market value is 1050. 30 day moving is basically around 1200. And then down here at the bottom, you know, Go Collect doesn't have too many recent sales for this one. Uh, but generally speaking, you know, if you were going to look for low grade raw copies of this thing, I think you would have a hard time finding this book for less than about, you know, $700. I mean, maybe if you can find, you know, a, a really great deal of the day, you could find a copy for the $600 price point. Uh, but that would definitely be a steal for that book. That's one that, you know, hasn't really corrected as much here in the 2022 calendar year, a book that really shot up in 2021. And I think one of the reasons it's been able to hold its floor overall is because it's just one of the greatest covers of all time. And even outside of Galactus and Silver Surfer spec, every collector wants that book. Anyways, that's all I have for this video. Let me know what you guys think. Do you guys have any of these books? Drop me a like, comment, subscribe if you're enjoying the content, and I'll see you in the next one.